Hey everyone, I prepared another Pinterest technical interview for you guys. From the last video, we went over the algorithm question that I received for the phone screen interview. After that interview, luckily, I got invited to the remote on-site interview. Here's the invitation email that I got for the on-site. Nothing really special about the email. It gives you when you will be having the interview, tips, Google Hangout link, and interviewers you will be talking with. One, of, one thing to note is that because it is a remote on-site interview, they give you an hour instead of 45 minutes for the system design interview round because it is technically harder to explain system design via CoderPad. I personally requested to use the Jamboard, Google Jamboard, to explain things on the whiteboard because I had an iPad at the time and it is much, much easier to explain that way. All right, are you guys ready for the question? The interview question was to come up with a system design for a new feature in Pinterest where users can follow pins or users for updates. For instance, let's say I follow a particular pin. Whenever there's an update on the following pin, I should get notifications for it. If I follow a user, I should get notified for any action the user takes. For example, posting a new pin or editing an existing pin. Now, I want you to pause the video and try it yourself. Give up to an hour to complete the system design interview. In this video, I'll deep dive into how to store follower information, how to create notification, how to send notification to users. Lastly, how to handle notification for pins or users with more than 1 million followers. First and foremost, before diving into the system design, we should fully understand the problem and its scope by asking appropriate questions to the interviewer. For this question, it is straightforward that our functional requirement is to allow users to follow different users or pins, notify users on users or pins that they follow for updates, and this feature should be available to all users in Pinterest. One last thing is that the interviewer asked me to assume that there's an existing notification service that handles notification. Pretty much, they asked me to treat the notification service as a black box that just works. So we scope the notification service out of the design. Next, we should try to understand what kind of request or data volume we're dealing with. You can ask questions like, what's the number of users for Pinterest? How many requests are we dealing with? What's the ratio between read and write operations? However, if you've done some research before the interview, you should have been able to come up with some ballpark number on your own. For example, number of users would be around the order of several millions users, number of pins would be around the order of several billions pins. And based on these two numbers, we can assume the QPS to be a reasonably big number. For example, 1 million QPS. Furthermore, Pinterest definitely has to deal with more read operations by the nature of its application. Of course, there are other questions you can ask, but you should wait after your initial design to follow up things like SLAs as security. First, let's dive into the design for following a pin or a user. What should happen when a user clicks on the follow button on a pin or a user? We should create an endpoint on the backend server to store the follow relationship. When the front end, mobile or web hits this endpoint, it would persist the follow relationship in the database and return the success response back to the user. Of course, error response otherwise, for example, network issue or invalid response. So we get this request. First, it would hit the load balancer. The request gets routed to one of the backend instance. It would persist the update in the database and return the response back. Here, we're using a relational database to store the follower relationship. The interviewer will definitely ask you, why not using other types of databases? For example, graph or document-based database. You should definitely be able to explain yourself for choosing one database over the other. The interviewer for this interview actually asked me this question. For me, I would say something like, non-relational database, for example, MongoDB, is not great for storing relationship between objects. It's good for storing one-to-one -one mapping data that does not change often. Also, GraphQL database, for example, Neo4j, is great when we need to deal with high depth of relationship between entities. For example, social network in Facebook where we want to find friends of friends of friends. However, in our case, we're simply referring to a relationship between a user and an entity. Here, it is one-to-many mappings. 
Therefore, I believe using a relational database makes sense here. Also, I did some research before the interview that Pinterest uses relational database to store pins. So it would make sense to use relational database and it wouldn't make sense to use another type of database to just store the follower relationship. And here's a sample data schema for the follower table. We would have a column for user and entity UUIDs, another column to specify what type of entity right here, and to store the time step that the user started to follow this entity. Now we have the follower relationship persisted in the database. We need to figure out a way to create notification whenever following pins or users make updates. Every request to create or edit pins would be done via calling an endpoint in the backend server. The backend server would persist the update in the database. After this update operation in the database, we can choose to create notification either asynchronously versus synchronously. Synchronous approach is after persisting the update in database, the backend server would explicitly send notification to relevant followers before sending the success response back to the user. This is not ideal because it would significantly increase the latency on write operations. Asynchronous approach, however, is after persisting the update in database, the backend server will create a task to send notification and send success response back to the user without waiting for notification to complete. Asynchronous approach makes much more sense for notification because it is not critical to the user request. We shouldn't make the user wait for so long to create or edit pins. One approach to implement asynchronous notification is to register a trigger on the pins table, listen for any updates, and publish update messages to Kafka, a message broker. We can use something like Kafka Connects to set things up. An alternative is to explicitly publish a message to Kafka on user request before sending the success response. Then we can create workers that subscribe to this topic and create notifications whenever there are messages on this topic. Before creating notification, workers would have to look up the followers table to retrieve the list of users following the updated pins. To recap, sorry, whenever the uh, create or edit request comes in, it will hit the load balancer and the request will be routed to one of the backend instances. And the update will be persisted in the database. And since we register a trigger, we'll get a trigger event whenever there's an update on this table. And that updated message will be published to this Kafka on a certain topic and workers will be listening or subscribing to that specific topic. And whenever there's a message, it will retrieve that message and the message would contain the updated pin UUID. With that UUID, it will read the follower relationship and then create a notification and send it off to the notification service. So far, we treated the notification service as a black box, but how does sending notification to users actually work? In the beginning of the interview, they told me to treat the notification service as a black box. But after the initial design discussion, we went back and discussed the implementation of this as well. In a big company like Pinterest, it's most likely to have a centralized notification service. Generally, notifications are sent out asynchronously and they have different priorities. In order to handle different sorts of notification, there would be different queues for different priorities. Unless specified otherwise from the interviewer, we can treat our notification as low priority and publish our notification in the low priority queue. Once we publish the notification messages in the queue, there will be notification workers that subscribe to this queue, find the backend instance that has the open connection with the user, then forward the notification. So this is the worker that we uh, had in the previous slide. So it will create a notification in the low priority queue right here. And there will be notification workers that subscribe to this uh, low priority queue on a certain topic. Whenever there's a message, it will grab it and then try to find the connection um, that we need to send the uh, notification for. And once that connection is found, it will try to uh, forward the request to the the connection, the, the backend is that has the connection and that backend will send the notification through the open connection uh, WebSocket. So one thing that I didn't go over yet is how user establishes connection with our system. 
a mobile or web user device can spin off a backend service to create a WebSocket connection with one of our notification backend instances. We should then persist this connection information in key value pair DB. So the key will be user identifier and the value will be the machine identifier. So user would spin up a background service to establish WebSocket connection. It would hit one of the load balancer um, and then it would route the request to the backend instance. It will establish the WebSocket connection and persist the client connection in the DB, key value pair DB. Uh, then the workers would use this information to find the right backend to hand off this notification request. Okay, So if the connection is not alive, we can either choose to drop the notification or we can make it available when the user establishes the connection again. I recommend you to watch the notification video from Netflix that I included in the description below. This person explains the notification service really, really well with nice slides. The current design works well when the number of followers is relatively small. However, let's consider a case where more than 1 million users are following a celebrity, for instance. Try to send notification to more than 1 million followers would just blow up the system. Therefore, we should have a special handling for users or pins with too many followers. We can adopt a hybrid approach similar to what Twitter uses. For updates with too many followers, instead of sending burst notification, we can make clients or users to call an endpoint periodically, let's say like every five minutes, to get updates on the entities with too many followers. You need to make sure that not all devices call this endpoint at the same time. In order to prevent such scenarios, we can randomize the period of calling this endpoint. For example, like a random number between zero to five minutes. So a mobile device or like web would call this endpoint sync notification. It will go through a load balancer, reroute it to one of the backend instance, and backend instance with the timestamp given, it will try to look for the new updates uh, by looking at the pins and the followers page. All right, we're done. Definitely, there are other areas we can discuss about this system design, but it should be enough to fill the one hour. Of